Richard, if um, after Richard's speech, I'm going to sell my shares in any company that makes podiums. So, um, so you know, I'm going to build on Apurva's uh, presentation and um, share a couple of stories that bring to life what she just um, described. I remember 25 years ago, when I graduated from IIM Ahmedabad, my first job was Asian Paints. So it's in, for those that are not from India, a uh, fairly well-known paints company in India, very, uh, very good training ground for management trainees. And I remember a group of about 12 of us management trainees, uh, our first exposure to the chairman of the company at that time. We trooped into the room, and we were all sitting, waiting, and then the chairman walked in. We all stood up. We were all really awed by the presence of the chairman. We sat down, we heard his pearls of wisdom, and he asked any questions. One tentative hand stuck up, and I think somebody asked a very inane question about career paths. And it was answered in the standard way, you start as a management trainee, you'll do this, you'll do this, you'll do this, and if you're really successful, you might make it to general manager someday. <clears throat> so January this year, fast forward 25 years, I took over as uh, the president of Coke in India, and I kind of swaggered into the room to have my first meeting with a batch of 25 trainees. So I did my speech, and I thought I'd done a great job. And of course, uh, I said, any questions? So this bunch of management trainees, also from the IIMs, my bunch when I graduated, same, IIM Ahmedabad, Bangalore, Calcutta, all those places. This bunch, also from the IIMs, just 25 years younger. For the next one hour, I got grilled. I got grilled so badly, by the end of it, I thought I just had another interview for my job as president of the company. And the questions were not what, what I'd come expecting to get. The questions are not about career. The questions are not about, you know, benefits or the standard things that we used to worry about when we were graduating, who's getting how much salary and all that stuff. You know, the most, um, the largest number of questions I got were about our CSR efforts, our corporate social responsibility. The questions were about how we leverage digital media and social media. The questions were about some of the criticism we as a company have faced on some issues related to environment and other things. The questions were um, a whole host of things that in our day we didn't even think about. And we wouldn't dare to ask the chairman of the company. So of course I came away from that interaction very humbled, but very inspired. And also realizing some of the things that Apurva talked about, some of the things you heard Andrew talk about, that this is a completely different environment. And if I were to describe it in just one word, what's changed? What's changed is that in our day, when we graduated 25 years ago, it was a linear world. It was a linear analog world. And suddenly, we're having to lead a group of youngsters who live in a digital, organic, networked world. Now, those are words. But it's a, it's a mind shift that's so tremendous that for us to understand what that means, I'll give a small example. Again, Apurva talked about projects, not jobs. So we have this uh, system where we get groups of youngsters, high potential youngsters together, we call the program Pegasus, and we give cross-functional teams projects to work on. And, um, one of these teams was led by a young lady from one of the IMs. Um, we had asked, uh, you know, we wanted to launch a new piece of equipment to chill soft drinks in rural areas. And for, I think, 40 years, we used the same technology, which is an ice box, a metal ice box. You put some ice in it, and you chill some stuff in it. And I'd asked my technical head to come up with a plan to develop a new, new, new technology. And of course, the 
The plan was a couple of million dollars, three years, development cycle, R&D, a team of 15, 20 people. It's going to take us a lot of time and effort. So we assigned this project to a team to say, come on, you know, just make a plan for us as to how we're going to make this uh, new technology work. How do we evolve from the icebox age into what's next out there? Two months later, one young lady came back with a project, and she's probably two years out of campus, presented to the leadership team of the company two months later a new technology that, was, that she had already tested, tried, and she was ready to demonstrate to us. And she'd spent maybe $10,000 on it. So we were amazed. We said, what did you do? How did you do this? So it turns out that this generation doesn't need a cross-functional team within the company. They know how to network with the world. So open source innovation that we talk about, they're used to it. They live it every day. She did internet research. She reached out to various people that she knew in a network. And she found some manufacturers sitting in the US who had developed some technology. She found some other um, co cooling technology on the web. She ordered some pieces from Amazon, got them delivered to India. She put up a little website inviting, peop you know, inviting uh, suppliers to do some development work. And in the span of two months, she managed to take a project that was on the drawing board down to prototype and completely upturn the way we did innovation. And that, we realized, actually broke a lot of the rules in the company. So the other lesson we learned was, as a company, we were not ready, we, and we're not enabling people to operate in this fashion, linear to completely organic, breaking down hierarchies, breaking out silos, truly leveraging the digital world, and understanding that sometimes you have to go out there and you have to start opening up the company and breaking down the boundaries with the outside world. And also, you just tell people, here's what you're trying to achieve, go figure out how to do it, rather than imposing on them the structures, the processes, the routines, and all the governance that we have as, as, as large organizations. And it's been a sometimes painful, sometimes difficult, and often, but also very rewarding exercise in the company to change the way we do things. So now, actually, a lot of our work that happens in the company happens to cross-functional project teams and we just throw a problem out to a group of people with little or no um, you know, structure. And the results we get out of them is amazing. So just a couple of stories to tell you what our or my personal experience and our experience as a company has been in dealing with this new generation. So yes, it's a, it's a, it's a generational shift. It requires tremendous changes in the way we operate as an organization. And it's all in the soft stuff and not in the hard stuff. So that's, that's just what I want to share with you. Back to Andrew.